Hey guys, DJ here. I'm signing back on to the Ace Attorney Trilogy. And so, we're about to start the next trial. And it's just... just holy shit. <laughs> um... Nick? Yeah? Did you know that Karma's daughter is only 18? Just like me? Uh, yeah. Why? I was just thinking about how strong she is. I mean, she's been in Germany all this time by herself, and she's so grown up. Yeah, and I'm sure she felt a lot of pressure from her father's reputation. And then you look at me, and... Well... I'm the daughter of the master, but I'm still just a little girl. And on top of that, I'm the suspect in a murder trial. Again. Uh, but I think you're really strong too, Maya, for all you've gone through. Good morning! The two of you look like you're doing well today. I'm happy. Aren't you supposed to be watching... Could I? Or could I? Hey! Morning, Pearly! You'll be safe today, Mystic Maya. Huh? What do you mean? My mother is coming today to show her support. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Pearly. Hey, Pearls? Yes, Mr. Nick? Um, do you think you could do me a big favor? Could you channel Mia today, too? Huh? I was sort of hoping to sit in the audience today and watch. Please, it's very important to me. I don't feel confident enough without our help. Mr. Nick, that's enough. You can't show weakness in front of the person you love. P Pearly! Not this again! Please, can you do this for us, Pearls? Um, alright. I'll do it. I'll do it for Mystic Maya's sake. See you later, then. I'll leave you two to your alone time. Oh, thank goodness. Nick? That's why Pearls won't be able to see today's trial. What do you mean? What's going on? <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Fey. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Let's start already. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I look forward to tonight's news with great joy. The image of your defeated face will tr be transmitted all over the world. All over the world, huh? Sounds like you've made quite an name for yourself, Phoenix. And don't to be foolish, you foolish fool of Bay in the foolishly foolish clothes. The famous one is me. I'm the prodigy who has never lost a case since becoming a prosecutor five years ago. Naturally, the bird's eyes are on me, as I conduct my first trial in this country. Uh... huh. That's nice, Miss Von Karma. Hm. Glad to see you in such good spirits today, Miss Faye. Uh... it's true what they say. <laughs> really? Women really are scary when they fight. <laughs> Elder, a very interesting theory was presented during yesterday's session. That the defendant could have left the channeling chamber, correct? Yes. And this key was is proof of that. This key, the only key to the channeling chamber, was not where it should have been. Your Honor, I would like to say one thing before we begin. All right, let's hear it. The prosecution has determined that from the time of the murder to the time of the arrest, the defendant did indeed leave the room at one, at one point. What? But, Miss Von Karma, then how do you explain this picture? Are you saying then that the person in this picture is not the defendant? I never said that wasn't the defendant. Then what is the meaning of this? All I am saying is that Maya Fey, after killing the victim, exited the room. And I believe that is when she dropped this key. Can you substantiate your claim? Isn't that what I'm here for? The 
prosecution would like to call the defendant's aunt, Morgan Fay, to the stand. Just as I suspected, Aunt Morgan. Poor Mia. She seems really torn by this. Witness, name and occupation. My name is Morgan Fay, and I'm the sp I'm a spirit medium, in a manner of speaking. I'm sorry, but what do you mean, in a manner of speaking? <laughs> I don't think anyone here really cares. Now then, after the murder took place, you kept watch over the defendant, correct? Yes, that is correct. I performed the spirit severing technique on Mystic Maya then. Spirit severing technique? technique to remove a spirit from a body and send it back to the other world. That is. Yes, that is. Mm. You, be quiet. Now, witness. Something happened while you were performing this technique, correct? Yes, that is correct. What in the world could have... Mystic Maya. She escaped from the room. What? And here we come to the heart of the matter. Maya Fey, while in a while in a possessed state, managed to escape from the channeling chamber. Order, order, order! Miss Fey, please testify to this court what happened during that time. Your Honor, I'll try my best. I think someone just dealt the ante on this trial. After we heard the gunshots, those two broke the door open and entered the chamber. I requested that Mr. Wright and the other lady please contact the police. A pistol was hanging from Mystic Maya's hand and she was in a daze. Then, quite suddenly, she thrusted me away from herself and escaped from the room. With great strength, she hit the base of my neck and I fainted for a short while. I'm afraid I have no knowledge of where she went after that. Why be hidden this until now? I... I do not wish to cause more trouble for Mystic Maya. However, I must correct falsities when they arise. More like when you're about to get caught, you old bat. That's right. She simply... she's simply correcting a falsity, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Why is she making it a point to take a stab at me? Never mind. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. My aunt is a very smart and shot and sly person. It's going to be hard for us to find a crack in her testimony. Just now, you said those two. Who were those two people you were referring to? I was referring to that foreign lady and yourself, good sir. Um, Lot is not a foreigner, despite how she talks. Oh, is that so? I'm sorry. I simply could not understand her atrocious English. Not to mention she looked awful. I can already see people on the Heartline gearing up for a riot. In any case, I have already sent the repair bill to your office, Mr. Wright. Oh, uh, thanks. What'd you do after that, Miss Faye? Was it really necessary to have two people do something so simple as call the police? If there was a possibility of escape, then one of us should have stayed behind. Hmm. Yes, that is a very good point. At the time, I myself was a little confused. On top of which, there was another. Another what, madam? Oh, it's nothing. No need to concern yourself. I want to hear the end of that sentence. There was another reason you wanted both of us out of that room, wasn't there? You must testify. Why did you chase us out of the room? I simply did not wish for there to be more victims. The lives of both the good sir and that, cam and that camera woman may be in danger, is what I thought to myself. Well, that was very noble of you, Miss Faye. 
this is bad. Now people have a good impression of her and bad one of us. Looks like she caught us napping. That's my aunt for you. Are you satisfied now, Mr. Wright? Miss Fate, please continue. During our investigation, you stated that you struck the defendant on the head. And this strike caused Maya to lose consciousness. Do you stand by this statement? I'm afraid I don't. The statement I gave you was a lie. But why would you lie about something like that? It's very painful for me to say this, however. Objection! The witness was lying to cover for the defendant. She was covering for Maya? So you were covering for the defendant? Well, yes. It was only later that I was informed of what had occurred. That the renegade Mystic Maya had done something very unexpected. Something unexpected? What, pray tell, did she- No! <laughs> this witness didn't and couldn't have seen what happened. If you want to know what this unexpected thing was, there's always later. Yes, very well. <sighs> Why does it suddenly feel like there's a rock in the pit of my stomach? Now, witness, continue with what happened. Holy. Was it really that easy for her to escape from you? I'm ashamed to admit to such a thing, however, yes. You, but you are physically larger and stronger than the defendant. There's no way she could have escaped from you so easily. Objection. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Phoenix Wright? What about this, pic this picture? Remember that at the time the defendant was not physically Maya Faye. <laughs> hmm. Growing old is such a mysterious thing. Trust me, I know firsthand. Basically, Mystic Maya's body was still that of the nurse she had called. But if she had run away, wouldn't you have given chase right away? Well, yes, I would have. However... Yeah, she fainted, supposedly. You fainted. I became dizzy and then collapsed onto the floor. How long were you unconscious? I... I'm not sure. About ten minutes, perhaps. Hmm. And the defendant almost certainly went somewhere in that time. Happy? Witness, elaborate on that point for us. No knowledge of where she went after that. Is that because you were unconscious? Why, yes. Great. Well, now what? I mean, I've questioned further every time. So while you were unconscious, you have absolutely no idea where the defendant went. I would think that's obvious, good sir. If that's true... Then how can you know for sure that the defendant left the channeling chamber at all? Not that you mention it. I have to wonder myself. It's true that this witness is not able to confirm this. But the key word here is this witness. What do you mean by that? It means she has another witness up her sleeve. That's what. Looks like Miss Von Karma is ready to move on to her next witness. That's enough. From what I can tell, there is nothing wrong with this witness's testimony. And from what she said, we can establish that Maya Faye did leave the chamber. Hmm. Hope this isn't going to come back and bite us on the butt. Now, let's take the next logical step and ask, where did the defendant go after leaving the channeling chamber? Yes, yes. That is exactly what she- <laughs> Be quiet, you. Now then, what the escapee had done was she had gone to speak with a certain person. She... she went to speak with someone? Who was it? The prosecution calls Miss Eenie Miney, who was sleeping in the, in the side room at the time. Eenie Miney? I think you can see where this is headed. Witness, name and occupation. Um, okay, so my name is like Eeny Miney. I'm like researching like parapsychology stuff at 
the, um, university? What is this parapsychology? Um, let's see. It's like, I guess, most people call it occult stuff? Even if that's what most people call it, I can't say I understand what that means. Did I suggest you go home and research it yourself? Yes, sir. Now then, Miss Miney. After the murder took place, you spoke with the defendant, Maya Faye. Is this correct? Um, well, hmm. Like, I guess. If that's the case, then let's hear your testimony. That is alright, isn't it, Your Honor? Yes, sir. For the love of all things good, Your Honor, have some spine for my sake! Against a, against this girl? Probably not. That whip is too powerful. Like, when the channeling started, I was, like, sleeping in the side room. Like, a little later, someone came into the room, like, really suddenly. It was, like, oh my god, totally my sister. I, like, hadn't seen her in, like, so long. I was so happy in, like, a sad way. My sister, she, like, told me something, like, totally terrible. Now hold your horses, young lady. You're saying the person that entered your room was your sister. Don't you mean the defendant, Maya Faye? Really now, your honor. Maya Faye was still in the middle of channeling at the time. Are you saying that the spirit was the spirit of this witness's sister? Yes, Mimi Miney. She was a nurse at Dr. Gray's clinic. Oh, well, this is... Witness. Like, yeah? In your testimony, you mentioned a terrible thing. Why don't you tell the court what this terrible thing was? I'm sure we'd love to hear about it. Um, like, do I totally, like, really have to? Of course. Miss Miney, please. My sister, like, this is what she said to me? That was... no accident. I was drugged. With sleeping pills. I was murdered. By that person. That's why I took my revenge. It's only fair, isn't it, Amy? She took her revenge. Are you sure that's what she said? Y yes There, are you satisfied, Your Honor? I still can't believe it. I can't believe that the spirit would go so far as to use a medium to get revenge. It is a bit hard to swallow. However, all the evidence and testimonies point to this as the truth. The end. What do you think, Mr. Wright? It certainly seems like all the loose ends are, are accounted for. This... This testimony just now, was it all made up? Was it just one huge lie? Well, of course it was, Phoenix. Me? Uh, what do you mean? It's well constructed, but that's all it is. But even the most well-spun lies can be undone. We can do it, Phoenix. Let's find that one loose thread and unwind this tapestry of lies. Your Honor, there is room for doubt, so the defense will cross-examine this witness. We believe that our cross-examination will reveal the real truth behind this murder. Yet again, the foolish fool spots, more f spots out more foolishly foolish drabble. I wonder if you'll make this one more entertaining than last time. Was that because of your, um, sesame allergy, was it? Like, that's right. I, like, think there was sesame seeds, like, in the lunch they served that day? 
I had this like premonition that it was going to be a to it was totally going to be a seedy day. Yes, indeed. Hmm. I see. Am I the only one who missed the boat here? Anyway, so you were taking a nap. Did something happen while you were sleeping? A little later, someone came into the room. Do you know the time? Um, uh, like, maybe a little before 11 a.m.? Something like that, I think. 11 a.m. Yeah, like, my stomach is totally ready for, like, food. Hang on. Why is there no time of death? I should have been able to get that. Ah, no. I think you misunderstood me. I'm not asking what time it is now. I meant what time was it when that someone came into your room. Oh, so, like, that's what you meant. Like, you should have been more, like, clear about it. Sorry. My bad. No, it's okay. Like, it's really... That's it? Why'd you stop mid-sentence? Did I? So, like, what was I talking about again? Never mind. Wait, miss, about this person who entered the side room. Boy, you're really blowing up the airhead act, aren't you? Are you absolutely sure? I guess? You guess. Was it or was it not your sister who entered? Like, I don't know. I mean, like, I totally don't know your sister at all, Mr. Smith. First off, my name is not Mr. Smith. Second, I'm an only child. <sighs> but, one, but more than that, she's managed to mess up the question with her answer. Well, Mr. Wright, the, the defense rests. Yeah, that was a colossal waste of our time. Now then, witness, how did you feel when you saw me, Miss Mimi Miney? You were happy in a sad way. Yeah, like, I mean, it was my sister. But wouldn't most people react here with surprise at seeing a dead loved one alive again? Um, but, like, maybe if I was, like, someone who didn't know about, like, the occult? But I, like, know all about the Korean channeling technique? And the point here is the witness immediately recognized that it was her sister. Yeah, like, what she said. Hmm. Should I drop this line of questioning? No. So you really didn't think anything strange of the whole encounter? No. Like, there wasn't any reason for me to, like, think anything was strange. But... OW! Don't keep badgering her. You know the phrase, objection? Could you try using that once in a while? Hmm. Mr. Wright. This question of what the witness felt when she saw her sister. Is it really that important? Yes! I think so! Personally, very much. Yes! I mean... <sighs> yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Let's see. You really think she wouldn't have recognized her own sister? It is very important, although I haven't quite figured out what it is yet. But I've got to bluff for now and make it seem like I know what I'm talking about. All right, Mr. Wright? Miss Miney, please amend your testimony. Like, okay, I'm like totally cool with that. I wasn't like scared at all. My costume looked to like totally normal. Did it. 
That was a very well spun line, Messini. What are you babbling about this time, Mr. Phoenix Knight? It's well constructed, but that's all it is. Stealing my lines now, Wari Phoenix? Miss Miney, may I remind you of what you said? You said the defendant. You, you, that defend, the defendant. There is no mention of the defendant in this line. Okay. Moving on. You said that there was nothing strange about your sister's appearance. Like, yeah? And? But I don't think that's what you were thinking at all. Take a look at this picture. This is a picture of the sister you mentioned? Of the sister? sister you... <sighs> this is a picture of the sister you met. I would think that even you would be surprised if someone appeared before you look like this. Look like this. Looking like this. The blood spray. Miss Miney, why did you not include the blood you saw in your testimony? If you were really testifying and not lying, you would have noted it right off the bat. <laughs> order, order! Miss Miney, what is the meaning of this? Miss Miney? Again, don't interrupt me! Um, that... And what are you stammering about, your honor? Uh, the uh, well, I, I, uh... Have witness. Personality did a complete 180 there. Lots of people do that when they get on the stand, though. First of all, calm yourself, witness. Like, I'm sorry. I, like, didn't mean to snap. Now, hurry up with the testimony. If you please. Uh, Josh still looks a little shaken up. A lot of help he's going to be. Like, the side room was, like, kind of dark, you know? D what? Bitch, it was daytime! So, like, the costume is, like purple, right? The blood totally blended right in. And I, like, persuaded my sister it wasn't, like, right to do something like that. And then, like, I took my sister to the channeling chamber. And then came back and laid right back down. Okie dokie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's exactly how it went. And you've given us a clear reason for why you didn't notice the blood. You think? Like, thanks, Gramps. Are you satisfied, Mr. Wright? Alright, I guess not. Very well, you may question the witness. Really? Because I thought it was pretty bright inside that room. Objection! Don't put your subjective opinions onto this court. Like, that's right! Um, excuse me, but how is my statement any more subjective than Miss Miney's? You're such a hopeless cause. Witness, you may feel free to ignore this tricky little man. Like, okay. Ugh, can't breathe. Let me out of here. You didn't see the blood. Like, yeah. But... She must have had the gun with her at the time as well. That's... um... Are you going to tell me next that you didn't notice the gun either? I, like, totally didn't. All I was looking at was, like, her face. Hmm. Continue. And I, like, persuaded my sister it wasn't, like, the right to do something like that. And what was your sister, Miss Mimi Miney, like at the time? Well, she was, like, totally flipped out, because she just shocked Dr. Gray. But I think, like, she knew. Like, she said she did something really bad. And, like, she said she wanted me to go with... She wanted to go with me to, like, apologize to Miss Morgan? Did Mimi Spirit really say all that to you? Like, yeah? 
Bring my sister to the channeling chamber. Was your sister calm by that time? Like, I guess so. I guess maybe, like, taking her revenge on Dr. Grey, like, made her feel a lot better? I'd like to be a lot better too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The sooner the better. She says with her whip at the ready. And, like, Miss Morgan was the only one in the channeling chamber, you know? May I ask you one more thing, Miss Miney? Like, sure. Was there anything you found strange, unusual, or just out of place? Something out of place? Huh? Like, when do you mean? Uh, when? Um, when you... Arrived at the crime scene, we're going to the crime scene. I primarily arrived because she said she was unconscious. Talking about when you arrived at the channeling chamber, of course. Um, like, no, nothing strange. Hmm. What should I do? Press harder. Think harder. I know you can remember something. I, like, totally can't. Just give up already, Mr. Phoenix Light. I wonder if I put too much faith in Amy's ability to do anything with that brain. It's no good. I can't find anything wrong. Phoenix, the judge believes his testimony. If you don't find some sort of hitch in her statement... I'll end the trial. I know. We have to give it another shot. Doesn't matter... Like, I'm still thinking about... I'm, I'm still thinking about the... <sighs> I'm still thinking about the whole, like, um, unconscious thing. Going to the crime scene. I'm talking about when you were going to the channeling chamber. Um, like, no, nothing strange. She answered rather quickly. No, what? Was harder there. Think harder. I know you can remember something. I like. That's not good enough. You have to explain yourself clearly to this court. Hmm. Do you think, Mr. Wright, that whether or not there was something odd in the, on the way to the channeling chamber is all that important? Very. I ask because it is very important. Not that I know where I'm going with this. Very well. Miss Miney, if you will, please include a statement about this in your testimony. Like, I don't get why, but... Okay. Like, I didn't see anyone on the way to, like, the channeling chamber. Wait a minute. Wasn't Pearly playing at the time? Because she accidentally broke the urn? Objection! You say that you didn't see anyone on the way to the channeling chamber. However, that's impossible. Like, what do you mean? I'd like to introduce someone to you. This is Miss Morgan's fake daughter, Pearl Fay. Interesting, you have a semi-intelligent look on your face. So, what about this child? It just so happens that at the time of the murder, Pearl was playing in the center garden. The garden? Yep. Which means anyone walking through the area would have seen- would have had to have seen her. So, Miss Miney, what do you have to say to that? Objection! As the court can see, she's a bit of an airhead. Also, she was leading her sister at the time. Do you honestly think she would have noticed a simple child playing, playing preposterous? Objection! It's not preposterous, and I can prove it. What sort of foolish... 
there's no way someone walking along the winding way could not have noticed Pearl. Because of... Like... The, the urn? She broke it at the time? This urn is my proof. An old cracked clay pot. What is that going to prove? Do you know why it's cracked? It's because Pearl broke it. That's why. She broke the urn? <laughs> Yo! Why? Why do I feel like you're about to ruin my beautiful day? This urn was broken around the time the channeling started. And Pearl was the one who put it back together. While sitting in the middle of the winding way. <laughs> Miss Miney. Pearl was there in the winding way at the time. She was hard at work putting the pieces of the urn back together, you see. If you couldn't see that while you were walking, I'd have to declare you legally blind. <laughs> I think I've sufficiently proven one thing, Miss Miney. You're a masterful liar. Mr. Wright, you need to watch what you say. The one who needs to watch what she's saying is the witness. So, Miss Miney, tell us the truth. A about what? About what? About where you really were at the time of the murder, of course. The witness just testified about that. That's right. I was, like, sleeping in the side room. Can I really believe her? Was she really sleeping in the side room? There is no way. Uh uh. Nope. Your lies end here. What do you. The witness says that during the actual murder, she was asleep in the side room. And I say that's not possible, because there's clearly a contradiction here. A contradiction? Where's this contradiction? It's in her testimony just now. Either in earlier in your testimony, Miss Miney, you made the following statement. And, like, Miss Morgan was the only one in the channeling chamber, you know? It's true that at the time, both myself and Miss Hart were not there. We had gone to call the police. So? Like, what does that, like, have to do with anything? It's very simple. Miss Miney, how do you know that fact? Uh, how? I can see that Miss Faye was the only person in the channeling chamber. However, someone who was asleep in the side room could not have known that. Which means, Miss Miney, you did in fact go to the channeling chamber. But you didn't go there by the way of the winding way. But look at the Mender guide map. If one were to go between the side room and the channeling chamber, one would have to use the winding way. Yes, that's right, Your Honor. Which is why... Which is why I asked this very important question. Where was the witness at the time of the murder? Uh, uh. Miss Miney, please answer the question. Objection. Don't have to ask a question off a of basis of assumption, if you please. Well, I suppose since you put it out on the table, Mr. Wright. You might as well answer the question for us. Where was the witness at the time of the murder? Not a chance, Phoenix. Yeah. The only person who could have killed Dr. Gray was Eeny Meeny. Eeny Eeny Meeny. Eeny Miney. Aye. So now's the time to prove it. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Where was the witness when the murder took place? She was in the channeling chamber. Miss Miney was here, of course. Well, but that's the channeling chamber. Isn't that the crime scene? 
That's right. Miss Miney was at the scene of the crime. Order, order, order! That's... Why, that is... <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Knight, have you lost your mind? Yesterday's testimony established that only the victim and the defendant were in the channeling chamber when the channeling started. Yes, yes, that is correct. Please explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Simple. Miss Annie Miney was hiding at the scene of the crime. I... I was hiding? Where? Like, where was I hiding? Behind this? Mm? Here, of course. B behind the folding screen. Don't, don't make any say this again. Recall yesterday's testimony. There ain't no way anyone was hanging out behind that folding screen. See? You stupid jerk. Quit being so quick to pin it on me, slime ball. No, no, Miss Miney, one so young as, as you shouldn't be saying. Shutty Gramps! As if you know exactly how old I am! Uh, I'm sorry. Looks like the pipe's about to burst. Guess I should help it along. The witness was hiding behind the folding screen with the help of this. Miss Miney, how were you able to hide yourself at the scene of the crime is very simple. You were hiding inside this box. Th th that tiny little box? No person could fit in that! Sorry, but your theory has already been disproved. Lana disproved you when she was hiding from being in it. But that clothing box was in the side of them, right? Which means it has nothing to do with the murder at all. That's right! I was sleeping there, so I should know! That clothing box was in the side room the whole time. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Do you think you can prove where the clothing box was at the time of the crime? Yes, I can, with some evidence. <laughs> and now I present the piece of evidence that will prove this clothing box was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Bullet hole. Take a look at this clothing box. You're so stupid. As if there's anything, any sort of evidence in that old thing. Th this what on earth? I don't have time for you to sit there surprised. Hurry up and say it already. Th there's a hole about eight inches off the ground. Hmm, a hole about eight inches off the ground. Where have we heard that before? The folding screen. It had a hole at the same height. That's right. I hope this has opened your eyes to what happened. At the time of the shooting, the clothing box was sitting behind the folding screen. Which is why the bullet from the pistol hit both the box and the folding screen. It went through the screen and then into the box. <laughs> Miss Miney, you were hiding behind the folding screen waiting for your chance. Yes, for your chance to kill Dr. Gray. Order, order. So, what you're saying... Then, Mr. Phoenix Wright, what, what about this picture? Are you saying that the person in this photo is Miss Innie Miney? That's exactly what I'm saying. Miss Innie Miney, you were hiding inside this clothing box all along. And you wore a medium's costume to masquerade at Miss Maya Faye. To masquerade as Maya Faye? She had it planned from the very beginning. She would kill Dr. Gray and pin the blame on my client. No! T stop! I can't stand to listen to any more of this foolishness. If that's the case, Mr. Phoenix Sight, then I have a proposition. This whole idea that the witness moved the clothing box to the crime scene, pretended to be the defendant, and killed the victim, and then fled the scene of the crime. It's not possible for one person to do that correct. It isn't. Not all by themselves. It really isn't possible. For one person to do all the preparations, that is. Ow! Need I remind you of the foolish received no mercy. Wait, Miss Von Karma. 
you said it was not possible for one person, correct? Oof. You can't be serious. <sighs> Miss Mining. You had an accomplice. Morgan Fay. <sighs> this person! If it wasn't someone from Kurang Village, you couldn't have gotten the costume. And if it wasn't someone from the Fate household, you wouldn't have that box to use. Morgan Fay? Is it that the wonderful lady, wonderful lady witness we had earlier? What do you have to say to this, M Miss Miney? <sighs> you shocked at the grave with your own two hands. Do you deny it? I think this is what really happened. But the murderer had planted herself at the scene of the crime long beforehand. Dressed in a medium's costume and wearing a wig, she pretended to be the defendant. And then, the channeling started. The murderer crept silently towards the other two, both of whom had their eyes closed. First, she drugged Maya Fey with a strong sleeping agent. Then, she stabbed out the grave with a knife. Next, she hid my client inside the clothing box. She did that so she could take Maya's place and frame her for the crime. But that's when something unexpected happened. Unexpected? Yeah. Dr. Gray was actually not dead yet. With the last of his strength, he fired a shot at his attacker. And that's why the hole in the folding screen was so low to the ground. The murderer then took the gun from Dr. Gray and... After that, you and the other lady thought to, thought to break into the room? Yes, a gunshot is certainly something you wouldn't expect to hear. Which is why upon hearing the shot, she forced her way into the channeling chamber. Miss Miney, she immediately covered her own costume with blood. And pretended to be Maya Fey. But that's what a deception would have to would have been easy to see through. Which is precisely why Miss Miss Morgan Fay chased us out. Please leave this area to me. Go quickly and inform the police. Hurry, before there are more victims here! What is one supposed to say? This is the real truth behind this murder. <laughs> Who is that, laughing at a time like this? Ah! Oh, you simple-minded fools. I'm sorry, are you still by chance evolving? What is this this time? Oh, I'm someone karma. Surely. Of course it was me. Do you really think someone of Von Karma blood would lose due to something this petty? What in the world? Mr. Phoenix writes, your argument is flawed in, ev in one very crucial area. And that is? If this witness was is the real murderer, why would she go through all this trouble? Huh? Working together with the medium, pretending to be one, putting on this whole act. What reason would she have to do such foolish things? Huh? Well, that's, uh... Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, and one other thing. Why would Miss Eeny Miney want to kill Dr. Gray? Where, where is her motive? Her sister? Excuse me? Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say too. Yeah, motive! I don't have a motive. Oh, but you do. You do indeed. It's called your sister. Motive? That's... 
can't say she has no motive here. I have to think of a motive now. What is the reason for wanting Dr. Gray dead? The reason you wanted Dr. Gray dead is this. Huh. Just as I thought. You bore me with your silly answers, Phoenix Wright. Just great. Now even she's calling me by my full name. You think I did this to get revenge for my sister's death? Yes! Because through that accident, you suffered a lot of hurt and pain yourself. Don't be stupid. No one has proof that Dr. Gray drugged my sister, right? And you want to say I wanted to take revenge based on nothing? What do you mean by that? Senile, stupid gramps. I'm, like, going to explain, so, like, please listen, okay? It's been over half a year since I was discharged from the hospital. If I, like, wanted revenge, then I wouldn't have waited this long. Um, and besides, like, the guy that thought of the spirit thing was, like, Dr. Gray. It was, like, a total coincidence he asked me about it, you know? She, she takes back to her airhead persona. However, you see- <laughs> Pathetic, Mr. Phoenix Sight. You failed to support your own theory. The end. I think we have our answer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What Miss Miney has stated is very true. The revenge plan is overly complicated and she has no motive in the first place. Furthermore, there is no reason for Miss Morgan Fay to cooperate with this plan. You don't even have any truly decisive pieces of evidence to demonstrate your point. Hmm. So many faults, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You should really learn your place. <laughs> What happened? I thought I had her for sure. <laughs> See? Like, it's just as I, like, told you. I hope you liked your slice of humble pie. Very well. I now conclude the cross-examination of Miss Eenie Miney. Your Honor, please allow the defense one more minute. Alright. You can't lose here. Have faith in yourself, Phoenix. Mia, yes, it does sound like a ridiculously messed up plan for our murder. But you know, regardless of that- regardless, that girl trained for this crime. Really? Listen, Phoenix. Everything happens for a reason. There's a reason for why she had to kill Dr. Gray. And it's also the reason she had no choice but to kill him in this fashion. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Your final answer, please. If you want to say that you can prove Miss Miney had a motive, then why did she kill the victim this way? Can you provide the reason? Can I? Can I really do this? Yes, I can. I am not totally confident here, but I know I'm, uh, that I must press on no matter what. That's right, Phoenix. Only you can do this now. I'll show and substantiate the fact that Miss Miney had a motive. <laughs> too bad you're too late. My cross-examination has already ended, after all. <laughs> Interesting. I'll let you have your chance, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? You're supposed to be on my side! <laughs> Ivan Karma only cares about the perfect win. As long as you have the will to fight, I will knock you down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And I don't care if you are my witness. So help me, I will throw you out of my way. No way. Very well. The court will take a five minute recess. We'll continue the cross-examination after we reconvene. Hey, wait a sec! <laughs> I'm about to give you that slice of humble pie you offered me. Is it really true? About my aunt? Oh, right. Um, unfortunately. I'm afraid so, Maya. There's no way Nee could have killed Dr. Gray by herself. And under the circumstances, there's no one else other than your aunt, Morgan. That's terrible! Why? 
Why would my aunt? Everything is going just as I predicted, Mr. Phoenix Knight. Then, Miss Von Karma! Why are you doing this? Why are you trying to take revenge on Nick? Nick had nothing to do with what happened to your dad. But you have something better to be worrying about. Say, your own situation? <sighs> Look it down on me, even though we're the same age. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? You caused me enough pain and suffering. Not yet. My goal is to defeat you, and to let the whole world know of your defeat. But even if you do that, it won't bring your father back. Hm. Whatever. In the meantime, let's bring this match to its conclusion. And then we'll know who the real winner is. Actually care about your father? I doubt it. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Can you prove Miss Eeny Miney had a motive? Yes, I believe I can. Eeny Miney and Dr. Gray have only one point of connection. And that's the car accident one year ago. The motive I'm looking for must be there. Miss Miney, please testify to this court about your car accident last year. Huh? I thought, like, you wanted to, like, ask about my, like, motive. I, like, don't see the point in, like, bringing up the past. Miss Miney, if you please. Okay, okay. Like, I totally don't think it'll do any good, but... That was, like, last year in May. Like, something really bad had happened at, like, my sister's clinic around there. And, like, the night of the accident, my sister was totally tired while she was driving. I was, like, totally pooped out too, so I, like, fell asleep in the passenger seat. I, like, woke up because of a jolt, and, like, it was a sea of flames around me. I, like, opened the door and, like, got away. Hmm. I think I've heard of this incident. It was all the talk on the tabloid shows day after day last year. Yes, and there was talk about Dr. Gray drugging your sister? You! Those were merely rumors. Totally baseless gossip. Hmm. Yes. Mr. Wright, you may question a witness. Right now, it's impossible to prove that Dr. Gray did, in fact, drug Miss Miney's sister. Yeah, which means I'll have to work this from another angle. Didn't some sort of medical malpractice happen at your sister's hospital then? Yeah, like, that was in May too. Like, the thing with all the patients dying was, like, May 2nd. And, like, our accident was, like, on the 24th. Two accidents back to back. Do you assume it's just a coincidence? My sis was, like, totally tired, so that's why. Duh. Holy. That was the malpractice incident where 14 patients died, correct? Yeah. What was the cause of the mistake? Like, I heard it was cause the medicines, like, got mixed up. Was that the fault of your sister Mimi Miney? Like, no way! Dr. Gray, like, wanted to blame it on my sis. And that incident has nothing to do with our mother here. Besides, the police report has already documented that it was entirely Mimi Miney's fault. Which means as far as the real facts are concerned, Mimi Miney is the one who made the mistake. But, like, it really wasn't my sis. And, like, the night of the accident, she was... She was totally tired. You mean exhausted. Like, she had to talk to the police and, like, was being investigated, like, every day? It was, like, a totally terrible situation. It's no wonder, then, that the car accident happened, huh? Press harder, always. So then, why didn't you ask to switch places? 
Huh? Like, what are you talking about? I mean, switch drivers. If your sister was so tired, then you should have switched with her. True, true. Uh, but, like, I don't, like, have a driver's license. Bullshit. This is news to me. I was not aware you didn't have your license, Miss Miney. Miss Miney, please admit your testimony. Uh, <coughs> actually... Miss Miney, that was a lame lie just now. Like, what do you mean? I know you had a license back then. This is a photo you took for the express purpose of getting a driver's license. Uh, What's the meaning of this, Miss Miney? Uh, um, uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, I had, like, a license, but... But I didn't get it until after the accident. No, you had it. You had it at the time of the accident. Director Hadi, or the guy pretending to be him anyway, said so. What are you talking about? That what, are you talking about the perverted fake clinic doc director? Yes, that perverted fake clinic director. And out of Yeah No one cares. Fitness. Ben did you receive a driver's license? Like, last November. What? November? That accident happened last May. That's a half a year... That's a half year lapse in time, Mr. Phoenix, right? But they had to use her license to reconstruct her goddamn face. I... What in the- That's what happened to Mr. Wright. At the time of the accident, Miss Miney did not have a driver's license. Ugh. Ow! Cry, and my whip will accommodate. Anyway, without a license, the witness and her sister could not have switched drivers. I'm, like, glad you get it, but... Like, even if I had my license, I, like, don't think my sis would've, like, let me drive. Hmm. Yow! Don't just stand there, hmm, me to yourself! Not you too, Mia! With the whip, and the pain, and the ow! <laughs> Where did- <laughs> Where did she get the whip? <laughs> That would actually be funny. It's like, hey, Mon Karma, can I see your whip? Whoopsh. Get it together, Phoenix! <laughs> oh. Miss Miney, why do you think you would not have been able to drive anyway? Eh? Um, that's because... I think the situation calls for a more detailed testimony. Miss Miney, if you please. Eh? Like, how annoying. Oops, like, sorry. Didn't mean to be mean. Like, around that time, I was, like, really close to getting my license. My sis was, like, this totally big fan of cars and, like, really valued them. She, like, had just gotten this really shiny, bright red sports car. She, like, would say things like, No way am I letting a noob drive my car. So, like, that's why I ended up in the passenger seat that night, too. Hmm, I see. A private car for sports. Now then, the defense may question the witness. Hmm. I'm not terribly knowledgeable about cars, but... So, what do you mean by really close? Like, I had one of those permit things. I 
think that's what they're called. Um, permit. Wow, the big name lawyer boy doesn't even know what a driver's permit is. Well, this lawyer never had a permit. Dad! Ignorance to be bit. What is with her? All she said in the last few minutes is utter nonsense! So, like, may I continue? I'm just a totally big fan of cars and really valued them. She valued cars. How much would she say she valued her car? Well, like, she'd flip out at, like, a drop of rain. And, like, she would notice if someone, like, touched the car door with dirty hands. In that case, why bother taking the car out of the garage ever? <laughs> why did she take so special care of the car? How can you say that? It was a brand spanking new car. New car. Like, you wouldn't want to, like, get it dirty, would you, Mr. Lawyer? I would think that cars getting dirty is just another fact of life, but I guess people who really love cars think otherwise. Phoenix, try asking something of more significance, all right? Well, Miss Whiny, what kind of car was it? It was a new car. Yeah. She had, like, just gotten it. It was, like, from the UK. Hmm, the UK. Were those her boyfriend's initials? And it was a really special model. She had waited for a whole year for it to arrive. I guess her love of cars would be the obvious next topic. I really don't know anything about cars. But I had a feeling this was bound to come up. Your Honor. Y yes? Please have the witness append what she said just what she just said to her testimony. You mean the part about it being a special import car? Yes. Well, if you like cars that much, then that's not my point. Though to be honest, I don't know what the point is either. Miss Miney, would you please fix your testimony? Sure, whatever. My sister's new car was like a special model, totally a special model from England. Silly, yeah. Okay, hang on, I need to. out the right way a minute. Japanese and British cars both have the- Miss Miney, do you remember this article? It's an article about the accident. You'd said this in it. But I opened the right door and, like, got out. That's correct, isn't it? Like, why are you suddenly asking me about that? Your Honor, which side is the passenger seat? The left or the right? Well, it's on the right side, of course. Because the driver's on the left side. That would be if it were an American car. But it would be the opposite in a British car. Opposite? The two of them were hiding in a British car. We're riding in a British car. Sorry. Not hiding. In that case, the passenger side would be the left side. <gasps> what do you mean by this? Miss Miney, you said that you had escaped using the right side door of the car. But if you were sitting there, then that means you were in the driver's seat. O order! Order in the court! Order! 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 Ah. 
but Mr. Phoenix Wright is babbling nonsense again. And he said the person who was who was driving was her older sister, Mimi Mimi Miney. That is what Annie said, yes. But that's where the story falls apart. Somewhere, all of us made a big error in our assumptions. Phoenix. Looks like he finally found the real root of this murder. If we connect all the dots, there can only be one answer. I'd like to ask the court a question. Eni or Mimi, who was really driving that night? would have been Mimi. The answer is the one person who had her driver's license, Mimi Miney. After all, that makes her the only person who could legally drive. But you just said the witness, Miss Amy Miney, was the one in the driver's seat. Which leads us to the next question. The next question? Who is the person standing at the witness stand right now? What sort of idiotic news is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Th this Phoenix's name? This Phoenix's name is... Wait... Is Amy the one who died? I'll tell you what her name really is. The witch's real name is... It, what? Mimi Miney. That's your real name. Objection. What a foolish dribble. Th then, how do you explain her appearance? This witness had severe facial burns when the witness admitted, was admitted to the hospital. So for the purpose of facial reconstruction, the surgeons used a picture. Facial reconstruction surgery? This is the picture she gave to her doctors at the time. That's right. It's a picture of her younger sister. But Mimi Miney, she died in the car accident. That's what everyone thought. However, that was not the case. Then the body they found at the car at the crash site. That was the body of the real Eenie Miney. Isn't that right, Miss Mimi Miney? My car accident went a year ago. The one who died that night was Eeny Miney. Her sister Mimi Miney then stole her face and was reborn as Eeny. With this, she effectively erased e Mimi Miney from existence. Your Honor, I'm sure you can now see why Mimi had to kill Dr. Gray. What do you mean? Ah! What is the meaning of this nonsense? Dr. Gray wanted to call back the spirit of a dead person. Specifically, the spirit of his nurse that died in the crash, Mimi Miney. However, that would not have been possible. Because Mimi Miney was still, in fact, alive! And that fact would have been discovered had the channeling been conducted. So this witness had to stop that from happening. At all costs. And... and... and that's why she had to kill Dr. Turner Gray? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Before the channeling, Dr. Gray had the misfortune of consulting this witness about communicating with the dead. And in that moment, his fate was sealed. Well, Missini? I mean, Miss Von Karp? <laughs> Why did you say my name just now? Looks like I've been unmasked. Witness? That's right. I admit it. My real name is Mimi Miney. That quack doctor. He got what he deserved in the end. 
I was so close to finally ditching Mimi, too. So close. D but why? Why would you go so far as to throw away yourself? To become your own sister? And I think I understand why. Mimi Mighty wanted her old self to disappear because of this. The malpractice. That's... That's about the malpractice incident. Dr. Gray was right. The mistake was caused by the nurse. A nurse by the name of Mimi Miney. That's right, the person standing before us today. In a few weeks after this mishap, Mimi Miney had a car accident in which she lost her younger sister. At the time, it couldn't have been us. 14 patients dying in that incident and her own sister's life. Extinguished. It was all too much to bear. I found a way for myself to escape it all. The only way. She lost everything in the flames of that accident. Her sister. And even her own face. This was her last chance. Her chance to throw away her past and start a new life as her sister. Unbelievable. A plan beyond my wildest imagination. Jerk. If only he hadn't thought of that channeling mumble jumble. Mumble jumble. Becoming Eni has been the most horrible experience in the world. Spirit channeling, the occult, I hate it. I hate it all. I believe there are still a few unsolved riddles here, such as why did Miss Miney choose to go with such an complicated plan? And why did Miss Morgan Fay agree to help her execute it? Regardless, I believe one thing has been made crystal clear. The innocence of the defendant Maya Fay? This... This is preposterous! I... I'm perfect! Me! Francisca Von Karma! I'm going to enjoy the news tonight, Miss Von Karma. How about you? It's going to be broadcast all over the world, right? Your defeat, that is? <laughs> Ow, 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 I know no more for good measure. And uh, I, I, I think Phoenix is... Phoenix! Hey, in there, Phoenix! Phoenix! This court is a fraud! A sham! And, um, more like... Your dad? Is a court... Is a, a fraud and a sham? No, then. It looks like it'll be some time before Miss Wright regains consciousness. So I will go ahead and pronounce the verdict. Not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. And, uh... I think Phoenix was long adjourned after that. How many hits was that? I didn't count. Congratulations, Maya. Sis! Aww. It's good, to, it's good to see you, Maya. How are you doing? Sis! Sis! I didn't kill anyone, did I? No, you didn't. It was all just a dream. A really bad dream. You know, sis. In my dream... I smelled a really familiar scent. A familiar s a familiar scent? I was inside that clothing box, right? That box? That was the box you used to store your clothes in a long time ago. That's right. Hmm. There's still one thing I there's still one thing I don't quite get. What's that? What would have happened if Mimi hadn't shot Dr. Gray? I mean, we broke in because we heard a gunshot. I think Mimi Miney had planned to open the door to the chamber herself. And then, you and Lada would have witnessed quite a scene. A possessed Maya Fey who had just committed a murder. She had it planned down to the smallest detail, huh? Nick! Congrats, Maya. Thanks. Looks like you bailed me out of another jam. Well, you know... But... I really don't want something like this to happen ever again. 
I'm fine because I have you to help me out, Nick. But every time something happens, I lose someone special to me. First my sister, and now my aunt. Hey, Nick, tell me. Tell me why my aunt went and did something so horrible. Why would she help Mimi Miney with a plan like that? I just... I just don't understand it, Nick. Maya, it's over. Why don't we just let it be? Nick, please, I need an answer. The reason Morgan helped Mimi with her plan was... I... Would have been so... Pearl could become next in line, wouldn't it? Pearly? Four years from now, a new master will be born into the Korean village. And that person will be you, Maya. And? But if you weren't there, then the main family's bloodline would disappear. And what would happen then? The branch family? My aunt! No, Morgan's spiritual power is too weak. The next person would be Pearls. Ah! Everything was done for her everything was done for her sake. It was also that Pearls would become the next master. Yeah, I can see that. Did Maya say something just now? I think that she was saying I thought so. Date and time unknown. Detention center. Soul 13. I'm guessing this is where they put M Mimi. No! Okay, this is where they put Morgan. My precious Pearl. You're the only one suitable to be the master of Kring, dear child. I sacrificed it all. All for you. I hope the brainless nurse carry out the carry out her murder. And cooperated with that whip happy prosecutor. All to unseat that annoying, witless, main family girl. That Maya Fay. But I shall be patient, my dearest Pearl. A chance will present itself. Your time will come. Maybe when Maya dies. Alright, episode 3. Turn about Big Top. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show! Prepare to witness a man who has mastered the wonder of flight! The world's greatest magician. The one. The only. Maximilian Galactica! So, is he the one that's gonna die? Oh, that was like being in a dream! It took Pearl to the circus. I haven't even caught my breath yet! <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, Pearly? It was great! There was a dancing bear, and a tiger that jumped through arena fire, an elephant that rode a giant ball, not to mention that guy who flew through the air! Yeah, Max Galactica. She was absolutely fabulous. Huh? What? Max? Max Galactica. The world's greatest magician. A magic -ition? No, a magician. Um, Mr. Nick? Hmm? What is it, Pearls? Does magic have anything to do with channeling spirits? I don't think it has anything to do with channeling. 
You don't know about magic, do you, Pearls? I'm sorry. I braved the winter cold and took Pearls to see a circus. It's been six months since that terrible incident in Korean Village. And it was during that trying time that I met Pearls. Thankfully, she seems to be recovering from it and is returning to her normal self. Uh, it's time to go. You're right, we can't miss the last train. Pearls, you remembered the train. Of course I did. But I don't really understand what everyone means by express train. Well, Nick, see you later. I'll come by to help clean the office. It's gotta be spotless for the new year. Don't worry about it, really. You're going to visit Mr. Nick on New Year's? Maybe. I'm glad you'll get to spend your New Year's with your special someone. Partly! Look, it's time to go. Happy New Year, Mr. Nick! Happy New Year. I really hope it will turn out that way. Twenty-eighth. We're a few days away. Well, oh, today wraps up for wraps it up for this year. Hope I can finish cleaning this place up in one day. Hello? This is Fre Nick! It's terrible! Ah, Maya, perfect timing. Things are terrible here too. Huh? The office has a terrible mess, and I have to clean it. What are you talking about? Um, my dirty office? What are you talking about? Listen, Nick, you have to turn on the TV. The TV. Now let's check in at the scene. Hmm. What happened? Thank you. We're here at the big at the Berry Big Circus. The Berry Big Circus has become the center of a sensational murder. The scene has created quite a stir among the throngs of excited onlookers. The very I mean, the very big circus. That's the circus we went to, right? They're saying that there was a murder. Yeah, they arrested him too. Arrested who? Max! They arrested Max Galactica! Uh, okay, so he's gonna be our client. Maximilian Galactica. Fans call him Max. Popular magician who can fly through the sky at will. Maya said she was a huge fan of Max. Alright, Nick. I'll see you in two hours at the detention center. Huh? What? See you there. You still got plenty of time to clean up your office later. Blah! Alright, let's go. Be <laughs> I had a feeling Maya would drag us into something like this. What are they talking about? Why did they arrest Max? You're asking the wrong man on that one, Maya. Maybe he uses magical skills to deal death with a sleight of hand. Maximilian Galactic, I would never do such a thing! How do you know? Do you know this guy personally? Fabulous! What, you, what the young lady just said was absolutely fabulous! What a clever girl! Such a fabulous understanding of events! What's just all this fabulous talk? Welcome to the visitor's room! It's Max! Nick, look! It's the real Maximilian Galactica! Alright, sweetie, pick a card. Any card. Do we even have- we don't have time for magic tricks here, buddy. You called me, sweetie? Nick. <laughs> Time's running now, sweetie. Pick a card. Any card. Uh, this one. Mm-hmm. I thought you would pick that one, sweetie. The Ace of Hearts. He got it! He got it! Nick, look, he got it! What can I say, sweetie? You've stolen one of my most valued possessions. One of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. Max! Well, time to make this an absolutely fabulous time. Max, you should let Nate pick a card. It, uh, I don't want to steal one of his hearts. And you are? Oh, how silly, silly of me. You must be the sweetie's driver. Her driver? Whatever, hurry up and pick a card. Any card. Um, I want this one. So, sweetie, let's be honest here. You came to this visitor's room to visit me, didn't you? 
Yes, I'm your biggest fan! Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. Hey, um, what about my card? I think of it as a souvenir. Well, Nick, I think it's time to get to work. Well, what's the matter, Nick? Why are you looking at the ceiling? I was just thinking about what I should have for lunch. Sweetie, drop Porcupine Head over there. Sour me with your attention, okay? Uh, oh, yes. Absolutely fabulous. Absolutely cringe inducing. Max, I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about more about yourself. Fabulous. I think we should get to know each other better too. Oh, why don't you come sit next to me? Um, there's a big piece of security glass between us. Oh, sweet Jeebus, what in the world? If only I could use magic, then I could make this wall disappear. What is this guy talking about? Anyways, lately you've become... Anyways, lately you've become awfully famous, haven't you, Max? Oh, that's a nice million to you, porcupine head. Get it straight. Jeez, people nowadays. They get their panties on a bunch over nothing. Anyway, Maximilian, you won a very prestigious award, re award recently, did you not? I did indeed. It was fabulous. I won the Magician's Grand Prix, held by the Ascension of International Association of International Magicians. It's an award that recognizes that I am the most fabuloso of fabulous world magicians. But uh, there was a trophy and a bust. It was a fab... I mean, it was an amazing day. Wow, that's incredible! Isn't it? I'm certifiably the greatest magician in the world! I'm going to guess he didn't win a trophy for the most modest magician. You're signed to an exclusive contract with the Berry Bag Circus, correct? That's the long and short of it. You sure you do your research, sweetie. I'm impressed. You just can't watch a magician on TV, you know? Magic is so fabulous, you have to see it with your very own eyes, sweetie. You're right, you're so right! However, the circus is a dinosaur, a thing of the past. And nowadays, no one even cares about what goes on there. Huh? What do you mean? But that's why I signed the contract. That's why you signed the contract. Thanks to me, the very big circus is fabulously popular. People come in come out in droves to catch a glimpse of the magic of Max Galactica. I revived the dinosaur that is the circus. But to me, it was just another magic trick. Isn't it just wonderful, sweetie? Yes? I made all the crusty, old crusty circus performances obsolete. But I kind of like the circus performances. Well, it's a bit down. Alright, let's get to the swing of things. What happened? Tell me what happened at the very big circus. Ah, last night. The Rainmaster was murdered. The Rainmaster? You mean Russell Berry? Someone smashed him over the head, I hear. He was slumped over on the ground. Even though it was the middle of the night, the police presence was fabulous. The police questioned me at length. Questioned you about what? About everything. I was the last one to see the Rainmaster before he was murdered. I saw him last evening, in his room. So then why were you arrested? Arrested? Don't make an anthill into a mountain, sweetie. They just wanted to consult with me on matters, that's all. Nick? I don't think Max understands how serious this is. She's right. I think I should shock him back in reality. Before the murder, you met with the Reed Master? Mm-hmm. What did you talk about? Things that aren't for your ears. Maya, would you please ask him? What did you talk about with the Reed Master, Max? It was nothing. Small talk, really. We were just having a chat about my salary. Salary? I am the one bringing in the crowds. I think that I should be compensated as such. You agree, don't you? E yes That's all you talked about. Of course. It was a fabulous chat. Uh huh. Fabulous indeed, huh? Just fabulous. I mean, oh no, he's got me saying it. What's the matter, Nick? You look all bent out of shape. 
All right, well, first... Hi. I'm a defense attorney. What's that badge? Is it used in a disappearing act? I'm not a magician, Max. I'm an attorney. An attorney? Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? He isn't wasting his time, Max! You're... Okay, okay, relax, sweetie. Just a little over-anxious, I think. Hmm. Anyways, I've been curious about something for a while now. What's that? Why do you keep looking at me with such a sad look on your face, sweetie? Because you've been arrested for murder! Oh, don't be ignorant. They wouldn't arrest someone like me. Why is that? Obviously because I'm the fabulous Maximilian Galactica. So? I'm the very big star of the very big circus. And that means... I'm rich. I'm paid fabulous sums. Which means what? Max? Quit joking around. You've got to be pulling my magic wand. The police aren't really serious about this, are they? They don't arrest people as a joke. <laughs> Look at Max, he's crushed. Well, he needs to wake up and smell the coffee. This is serious business. Um, um... Yes? Poor kid. I mean, sir, you're a lawyer, right? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm an attorney. Please, help me! I didn't kill nobody! Didn't kill nobody? I may be more spoiled than a hog in a hamburger mud pit, but a killer? That's insane! I... I... I could never... M max I swear! I just wanted to pay off my daddy's dead. He's back on the farm. Okay, okay, I'll take your case. Really? Really? <sighs> Thank you much. Y'all sure are all nice folks. Um, Max? Yes? What's, what's, what's your real name? It's Billy Bob Jones. What's the matter, Maya? He's really just a country bumpkin. <laughs> I must apologize for not being my absolutely fabulous self just now, sweetie. Huh? Mr. Attorney. Yes? A few minutes ago, you took one of my cards, didn't you? Um... Now that he mentions it, I did take a guard. It was the ten of hearts, right? What? How do you- He got it right again! What can I say? You too. You've stolen some of my most valued possessions. Ten of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. Sure do have a lot of hearts, don't ya? <laughs> I'm putting my faith in you, sweetie. He didn't just call me sweetie, did he? Right! Let's make this an absolutely fabulous case! Come on, Nick! Come on and... and... and what? Well, I guess we should start uh, going around questioning. Guess we gotta find some way to break those locks. We're here again! Yep, this time we're here for work. Hasn't been that long since the crime, so the police are still on the scene. So let's find someone who might know something about what happened. Sounds like a plan. Uh, let's head to the big top. Circus stage sure doesn't look this small from out in the audience. Wow. This is where they all perform, isn't it? Nick, do some somersaults! I'm not doing any somersaults. Why not? You look like you'd be great at it. Why do I look like I'd be great at somersaults? Huh? Nick? Wasn't me. Tiger. The tiger! He's coming this way. Tiger. 
Nick, you're too young to die. Nick! Stay! Stay! Heal! I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. Nick! Nick! Are you okay? <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? Regent is such a cute tiger, isn't he? What's the matter? You two sure are quiet. Don't what's the matter, me? Nick, he almost died there. <laughs> he wasn't anywhere close to getting hurt, let alone dying. This little targly ta targly? The fuck? This little tiger hardly ever bites people. And besides, people normally never get to play with a wild tiger, right? So if you think about it, you're actually really lucky. Huh? You agree, don't you? I guess... What do you mean, you guess? Why are you agreeing with her? Woohoo! Your costume! Huh? It's cute! I want to try it on! Costume? You mean my clothes? You don't mind me letting me try it on, right? Uh, I guess not. Really? <laughs> You're the best! Wow, the tables turned quickly on that one. So much for the tiger thing. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Regina Berry, the renowned animal tamer of the Berry Big Circus. My name's Maya Faye. I'm a spirit medium. Phoenix Wright, attorney of law. When you put us up next to an animal tamer, I bet we really look odd. Nice to meet ya! Uh, likewise. Hey, Regina? What do you know about what happened last night? You mean the murder? Huh? My dad was murdered. Oh, I s Wait. What did you just say? So, the ringmaster was your... Yep, the ringmaster was my dad. I'm so sorry about what happened to him. Why do you say you're sorry? Huh? Anyways, everyone was here practicing last night. Even your dad? Yeah, everyone was here. We finished up around 10 p.m. After that, everyone went off on their own. I was the only one who stayed around here. Why did you do that? I was playing with Regent. Regent. So she was with the, that beast. That's when the police showed up. When they took me to check things out, Dad was dead. For someone whose father was just murdered, she seems awfully perky. I wish she would tell us more about her dad. It's incredible that you're an animal tamer. If you say so. It has to be really scary. Scary? Why? Huh? Regent isn't scary, he's cute! Ever since Leon died, Regent has been my best friend. Leon? Yes, Leon the Lion. Leon the Lion, Regent and Regina. Interesting name choices. Leon, he died? Yes, actually he was killed. My dad killed him. What? Why did he do that? I'm not sure why he did it. It's tough not to get charmed when she looks at you with those innocent eyes. Um. Alright, so... About your dad. After practice was over, dad went right back to his room. His room? Yeah. That door right over there leads to the readmaster's room. Hmm. I don't know why, but he went up to his room in a hurry. What what happened? The ringmaster's room. It's probably a good idea to check it out for myself. Oh, uh, what can you tell me about Maxie here? It's Max! Hey, where is Max now anyways? You don't know? Nope. He's been arrested. He was charged with the murder of your father. It's okay. Nick and I will help him. Max isn't the guy, is he? I mean, the criminal? Of course he's not. I'm worried about so many things right now. Hmm. Like what? <laughs> uh... Regina, what's the matter? What's on your mind? <laughs> I'll tell you, Maya, but just you. Uh, um, well... What? 
Really? And then... Oh my, that's incredible, Regina! Come on, Nick, there's no reason to pout. Don't worry about me. Regina told me that someone professed their love to her. Professed their love? Not only that, it was Maximilian Galactica! How old is this girl? I wonder how many people have stolen one of his hearts anyways. And then, on the exact same day, another person professed their love for her as well. Wh who was it? Someone named Trilo. Trilo. Apparently he's a tenor who sees in the circus. Hmm. I haven't met him yet. Regina seems to be quite the hit with, with the men in the circus. She must have some sort of strange power over them. You're not kidding! Two people in one day! Even I want to profess my love for her. Me too. She's so cute. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Uh, let's go check out the remaster's room. This is what's the remaster's room? Yeah. This room belonged to the victim. Which means this must be where Max met the remaster last night. Now that you mention it, that is what he said. I wonder what... Hmm? That's an interesting poster. It's a poster of Max! I want it! I want it! Nick! I want it! I want to get out of here. What's this? It's a table for guests, with some papers scattered on top. Look at this! Max's salary is written on this piece of paper. Yikes! What is it? I didn't know that a magician... The salary is incredible! She looks like she's about ready to pass out from shock. How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? That much?! Incredible, huh? You could say that again. This must be the paper they used to negotiate Max's salary. The Master signed and dated it. What's the matter, Nick? Max definitely got a raise. But this document is dated a week ago. Hmm. So then why was he in here? Nick, look at all the cute trophies! Indeed, just look at all the awards Circus has, run has won. Like... All Country Quiz Champions, Rainmaster Association Mini Golf Master, Beer Belly Balloon Bounce Champ, Pet Grooming Grand Prix. Wow. The remaster was a multi-talented in ways I could never have imagined. There's a lot of posters here, don't you think? There are indeed. So many posters that there aren't that they aren't likely to miss one, are they? Maya? We're supposed to be the honest ones around here. But but you didn't even notice that I took one! Ugh, she already swiped one. <laughs> You're incorrigible, you know that? This is strange. Everything else looks nice, but his desk is, looks old and cheap. There's a really big photo on the desk. It's a picture of Regina and her father, the ringmaster. He really loved her, didn't he? Regina was lucky to have such a wonderful father. You may not know this, but they call this a tailcoat. And they call this the face of someone who already knew that, hmm? What? A scrap of white paper sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh, where? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging through people's coats. Uh, you always make me feel like I'm doing something wrong. This is where the Rainmaster applied his makeup. It's quite a collection of the most understated colors. Shocking pink, for example. This one says it's 100% all-natural organic mascara. And this one says that's enough for a baby, strong enough for a mime. The remaster must have been really concerned about his skincare. Very metrosexual. What does that mean? All of these frames look the same. They almost look like thank you cards. Looks like every year the remaster made donations to charity. To the Robot Clown Research Center. You're kidding, right? 
What? They made a perfectly reputable chair charity in the field of advanced tomfoolery. Nick, look at all the photos lined up on the wall. It's like a guided tour of the circus's history. This is so cool. It seems like there were so many happy memories. Maybe we should do this sort of thing in our office? We could put up pictures of all the clients who have been found not guilty. And what if we had a client who was found guilty? Um, we'll just pretend like they didn't exist. How's that? Nick, now you've got me thinking about losing cases. Why'd you do that? Look at this, all the stars on this poster. There must have been... This must have been the poster they used to promote their public appearances. Posters are the way to go, aren't they? What do you mean? We should make posters to promote our law firm. Spine-tingling legal action. Mind-numbing legalese. You will say wow. Or perhaps, hold it! Don't mess out on a stunning life or death courtroom thrill ride. With those taglines, our law, law firm would sink faster than the Titanic. So... Are we not going to... No, okay. Let's head to the plaza. This seems to be a dorm where all the performance or the performancers? Ugh. Performers in the circus day. Really? So we might run into that stoogy clown here, right? He's so kooky. Ah, it's you two. Oh, hey Gumshoe. What's up? Oh, oh, Detective Gumshoe. Oh, is it you guys? Always seem to, be, to know when I'm working at Crime Scene, pal. Because you're always working, Detective? Well, I'd rather not be always working, but with crime, you don't make your own hours. If I have to be at the circus anyway, I want to see Lion Tamer on the tightrope. However, no matter where I go, the show is always the same. Dead body, stage left. Nick, Nick, he complained. <laughs> That's a rarity. Let's get back to business now, okay? Do you know who will be the prosecutor in, tr in court tomorrow? Of course, it'll be Miss Von Karma. Uh, she isn't gonna hit me with her whip again, is she? What do you have to worry about? You only have to see her in court. When she shows up at the precinct, the sound of that whip never ends, pal. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure Miss Von Karma's really interesting and all, but there's someone else I'd rather talk about. Like who? Like Mr. Edgeworth, of course. You know, Nick's true rival, Miles Edgeworth? What in the world happened after I went back home? Mr. Edgeworth, we haven't heard what happened to him? Nick won't tell me. Well, to be honest, I'm not at liberty to tell you either. Let's just say he's not around anymore. He's not around? Nick, what does he mean Mr. Edgeworth isn't around? Exactly what he said. He's not around. Edgeworth is gone. Don't say his name again, okay? Nick? Y'all are making it sound like he died. He did not die. He ain't dead. The remaster of the circus was murdered, wasn't he? Yep. Last night around 10pm. He died outside in the cold. But he's had a way to go out and ask me, pal. It was rather cold. This is the scene of the crime, pal. The body was found right over there. Right about where you're standing right now. <laughs> Surprised you, didn't I? I'm not laughing. Hey, excuse me, but do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? He was killed by a bloater and a nugget, pal. Yeep. It's pretty clear cut as far as the murders go. He was discovered quickly. But... But? There's just one thing that doesn't quite fit. Huh. There always seems to be something that doesn't quite fit. What was this one thing that didn't just... that just didn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier? Footpat. Footprints, pal. Footprints. Footprints? Look at this picture of the crime scene. What's this? The wooden box under the body. No clue, pal. 
Some forensics expert took it back and are examining it now. And? And? What's so mysterious about the footprints? Cool, calm down. I'll take a good look at the footprints in the picture. The victim's footprints are on the scene. That's right, pal. Problem is... The killer's footprints aren't there. Bingo. Where did the killer come from, and where did the killer run off to? Obviously, there's no way the killer committed this crime while flying. A flying... culprit. That's when something just clicked in my head. There's no way! Flying is impossible! That's right. Flying is impossible. Absolutely impossible. <laughs> That's with the whole laugh, pal. I meant nothing by it, pal. Better stated, it means I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I can get some info about Max out of him. Looks like Max is the most unpopular guy in the circus tent. You know what they say, bad attitude follows you everywhere. Hmm. He's, he's a bit arrogant, but he didn't seem that bad. But just because someone has a bad attitude doesn't make them a criminal. Well, it's not just his attitude. I've got proof, pal. Huh? He left something at the scene of the crime. One of his magician's trademarks. An incredibly well-made silk hat. Well, it does have very classy decorative elements. Max uses a cloak, silk hat, and white roses as his signature symbols. Pretty mundane, aren't they? Who cares if they're mundane? At least they're easy to understand. I must have hit a nerve. That's what he said. Who said? The eyewitness. Huh? Tell us about the eyewitness. Um, so about the eyewitness. <laughs> you know I'm not going to tell you about that. That's the prosecution's trump card. Hmm. Oh well. Oh, I just remembered. What? I forgot to mention that you two are barred from entering that lodging house. Why is that? Oh, no reason. Just something I remembered to tell you. It must be because that's where the eyewitness. That's where the eyewitness is. Let's check it out. Don't you dare, pal. Too late. Mo. I wonder whose room this is. The name tag on the door says Mo on it. And I guess he's not here. Wow, it's a real mess in here. Mine was probably worse, though. Oh well, I give up. We'll have to come back later. Or we could look around first. All oh, those clown costumes lined up like that. I don't know about you, but it's creepy. Look at the collection he's got. It's incredible. Be a collection of clown costumes from around the world. Oh, I almost forgot. What is it now? She could not want me to try one of those on. I was thinking of starting a costume collection myself. I call it World Spirit Channels. We could display it in our office. In our office? As soon as you start paying paying the bills, you can say that. Mo seems to be a voracious reader. Look at all the hard books he has. Clowns are dummies. The joke's on you. Treat your peons right. And the classic funny jokes are funny. Wow, Mo's very studious. Joke's on you, huh? <laughs> Clown equipment's so funny looking. He's got a bouncing ball, a unicycle. He's even got a trampoline. But they're all broken. Maybe he was just a little too excited during practice. Who knows with that guy? Maybe he's part. Of, maybe that's part of the gag. Awesome! Look at these shoes. They're great. Forget the shoes. Check out the great gag banana peel. You sure it wasn't most snack after lunch? Are you blind? Look at how many scratches are there are from people slipping on it. Mo's got an excellent pair of pajamas. Laid on his bed in an excellent manner. What? 
Those are pajamas? You mean he goes to bed dressed as a clown? Ew. I... What the? There's a string of carrots here. That's strange. The carrots seem to come from in all different shapes. Weird. I can't tell if Mo just likes carrots or if he's using them for some sort of gag. Oh, uh, why is there it's the ceiling? Looks like someone punched a hole in it. You're right. I wonder what happened. Hmm. I don't even want to imagine what goes on in here. Hmm. Oh. I'm going to end the episode here. Next episode, we'll continue our investigation. Till then, I'm signing off. Bye-bye.